Hey everybody, it's Dad the Red, and welcome back to Highway Blossoms. Right then, last we left off, we had left Las Vegas, and we're now entering California. So cheers to that, I guess. One step closer to the final destination. That, I guess, being the, um, the concert there. I'm curious to see exactly how much longer this is going to go. I mean, I expected the game to take a lot longer with the treasure hunt thing, so I'm surprised it's gone this much longer past that. I'm not complaining. I'm just surprised that the treasure, po uh, the treasure hunting portion was so short in comparison. Well, just short in general. But I'm wondering how much longer it'll go past the concert, because the concert seems to be what's being framed as the end goal. You hit that, and that's kind of where things get really uncertain afterwards and we don't know how it's going to how these two may or may not diverge from that point so i am very curious anyway let's move on i am recording right yes professionalism i it's gone before i can even process it huh i guess we're in california <laughs> doesn't look like marina's noticed and why should she we passed several state lines and it never was a big deal then no welcoming party or even a government checkpoint and that suits me just fine she hasn't uh, brought up her surprise anymore either, whatever it was. Probably better to just let her forget about that. But see, now I'm curious. But that doesn't mean the day is over yet, and the places that Geezer would always uh, yak on about may as well be stapled onto my brain. Hey, you trust me? Her head perks up, and she turns away from the window, answering without delay. Of course I do. Why? Just checking. Cryptic. Ominous. And that's that. No more questions, just blind trust. I continue driving, eventually branching off onto an exit. Another thing I don't think Marina notices. Soon, budding lights start popping up in the distance. Typical yellows and whites, barely hovering above the road with, uh, with one ex exception. Towering on the horizon, outlined in neon red with digital numbers climbing towards the sky, is a giant monstrosity of a thermometer. It caps off above the middle, reaching the temperatures all the way up to 68, uh, uh, reaching temperatures all the way up to 62 degrees. Finally, it dawns on Marina. Her head twists towards me like an owl, her eyes just as wide as uh, one. Amber, what's going on? She feigns concern at first, but her voice curls up mid-sentence, unable to hide her smile any longer. You think you trust me, right? And I do. <laughs> Marina tilts over and rubs up on my shoulder. I go dead stiff. Again, feeling the weight of that trust and responsibility. We drive into town, which as far as I can tell is just one long street. Old beat-up gas stations and fast food joints line the side of the road, separated by an occasional diner. The thermometer is tucked away, hidden in a corner, but it may as well be the center of the universe, the rest of the world zooming by it on the, on the interstate. I pull into the lot by the thermometer, its only neighbor being a small shack. The sound of the ignition dwindles down to nothing, leaving the RV parked wherever. Bygun Motel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Br Bad big guy? <laughs> These have to be two different things on the same sign. Bygone Motel. What? Actually, it's America, so that may actually be the name of a hotel somewhere. But the Bygone Motel! <laughs> I'm the first one to get out craving the sweet stationary concrete as I stretch my legs. Wobbling in front of the thermometer, I flop my hands at my sides, dotting our arrival. Here we are, the world's tallest thermometer. Pointless, but okay. It's like, there it is. What does it do? It's a thermometer. Okay. And I'm a very cynical bastard, yes. I can't enjoy simple things, I know. Marina steps out of the RV, eyes sparkling, mouth wide open and all. Her face frozen in uh, frozen time, she reaches into the ho motorhome and pulls out her camera, a single flash shooting out from it as she winds the camera for the next shot. I thought you might like it. Bless the dear, she's simple. A smug grin finds a way, uh, finds a home in my face. It's like, oh, you mean like always? As I revel in the pride and satisfaction, knowing that it's something to make her smile. Except she's not smiling; she's staring, not at the thermometer now, but me, a near lifeless gaze cloaked by the dimming headlights of the motorhome. Uh, Marina. Reading her stance, she pushes off her, her she pushes her feet off the ground and charges towards me. If we're doing this, we're doing it right. Wait, my... Too late. Before I can even finish my plea, she swings around my neck and snugly brings me to her side, swooshing out of the ca uh, swooshing out the camera and aiming it right at us. 
Hey, Amber. Her finger inches closer to the button. Don't do it. Say. Oh, say. Uh, say. Yeah, I got it. She draws out the word to an excruciating length. I struggle to break free, but she just squeezes me tighter. I'm warning you. Hey, cheese. She bends in and presses her lips against my cheek. Oh, that's adorable. Hold and flash. Where did... Where the... Where the fucking cup come from? Huh? I stare at the camera. <laughs> yes. At the very <laughs> surprised expression. <laughs> oh. Deer in headlights. There you go. I stare at the camera, mind blank, my non-reaction drawing out a cute giggle from her. And then it hits me. A thought so mortifying and embarrassing that it shades my skin a pink and red gradient. She thinks this is cute. At this point, I'm Butter, or Clay from Rena's perspective. And then she just... <laughs> okay. That one's disinterested, and that's much more dignified, at least. I think they put a lot of work on these. I really like them. The quality is, is really good. It gives you different different perspectives of the characters as well. They didn't just like take the the basic uh, <laughs> models, the, the, the little uh, set pictures they use for everything else, and just paste them in there. Nope, they actually drew little pictures, and that's yeah, that's touch. And that's exactly what she treats me as, molding me into new positions as she snaps more photos. She's so happy. Before she winds for the next photo, I nudge her head into mine. She nudges back, both of us cuddling against each other as she snaps the next picture. She takes several more shots, each one a little more gooberish and drenched in cheesy romantic goo than the last. <laughs> that fucking smile, though. <laughs> mm. Just, really? Peace? I'll probably die if anyone ever sees these, but with any luck, I mean, this constant bouncing will hopefully make a few of these come out fuzzy. Still, I think I might love this. Like, a lot. When we first met, I didn't think I'd ever understand the naive ball of energy just looking for some help. In a lot of ways, I still don't. I drove by at such a perfect time, who even knows what would have happened to her? Thinking about it still drives me nuts. But still, those types of things don't seem nearly as big as I used to. Even almost losing the treasure to Mariah was just a sizzling drop in the frying pan. If anything, I'm more upset that I wasn't there to help her when it went down. After all, that's why I'm here. To help and protect her. She makes me so happy. With my hand now wrapped in around Marina, I clench her tighter. Only for my hand to be met with an adorable giggle, uh, gurgling rumble transmitted from her stomach. We both look down at the source. Her with a bashful sort of terror and me with, an, with amused disbelief. Even after all that food at the buffet? I can't help it. You're a bottomless pint. The Marina Trench. Ever please, that one wasn't even clever. Dumb puns. Feed my strength. I cackle with glee, tossing her the keys to the RV as I walk over to the nearby shack. I'm just messing with you, babe. Go lock up. We'll grab a bite and sleep here for the night. The shack is sad and abandoned, the cute logo of a little chef carrying an oversized bun all that faded away. I peek inside the browning window. It's, it's more of the same, rusty and decaying, outlines of tables and booths are imprinted in dust, while the ones built into the walls were just left to rot. It was always a side thing he mentioned when talking about the thermometer, but not being able to experience everything he mentioned feels wrong, like I'm not doing right by him. Damn. Looks like that's one more thing I can check off your list. Well, yeah. Marina waltzes into the diner, keeping the door open for me as we scurry in from the breezy entryway. Immediately, she's drawn to the claw machine in the corner, filled to the brim with non-specific and unlicensed stuffed animals. Her eyes glitter as she tries to get me to notice the glass box of wonders. <laughs> Look at it. We're buying this. We're, going, we're getting shit. Put quarters in the thing, now. Coming from anyone else, this action will be subtle and maybe a few quick glances at most. Coming from Rena, not so much. Instead, she repeatedly swings her head in the direction of the machine like she's trying to form a giant crescent with her neck. <laughs> but I know Marina well enough by now, well enough to know exactly which one she wants. Snuggled tight between a fuzzy ball with googly eyes and a lion with a crown lies the Holy Grail. 
a gray wolf with, polka, with a polka dot bow tie. Because that's the crown of the, of the whole stuffed animals. That has a polka dot bow tie to make it proper. Unfortunately for her, our waitress is already waving us over to our seats. Marina stares into the glass, her foggy reflection lining up the wolf, uh, with the wolf. I take her hand and lead her to the booth. Once there's some distance between us and the waitress, I lower my voice. Don't worry, I'll give it a whirl after we eat. Marina, however, can't take a hint and blurts out her response, alerting every weary soul in the diner. Whoa, you actually know how to win at those? I've never been any good at them. A counter in line with jumbo clones turns around and glares at us before shaking their heads and returning to their meals. Oh well. Of course I do. You know how many of these diners I went to as a kid? When you eat at the same place almost every day, you get good. Fast. Wow, you're like a claw goddess. Damn right. I mean, good us if you can, but as far as I'm concerned, they're all fucking rigged. Marina ogles me with the claw... Uh, Marina ogles me like the claw goddess I am as we take our seat to the booth. I gladly accept her glory and praise. <laughs> Lavish me more. The waitress flops the menus on our table and silently waits for us to order our drinks. Just coffee for me. I think I will. With her eyes glazing over, she turns to Marina. Hmm, what kind of shakes do you have? The waitress reaches with her wrinkly hand hands across the table and tosses a dessert menu in front of Marina. Hmm. Hmm. She flips through the menus and strains her eyes shut, focusing on what very well may be the most important decision of her life. Amber, you get coffee, right? Right. Then that's what I'll get. Overflowing with certainty, she stares at the waitress and gives her a direct, confident command. I'll have the coffee shake. Extra whipped cream. Yeah, okay, I was about to say, she didn't actually order coffee. She ordered a fucking, fucking coffee fucking shake. The waitress doesn't even bother to write this down, instead dragging her body back to her tomb in the kitchen. <laughs> very, all very cynical narration. Thank you, Amber. You know that shake isn't going to taste the same as my coffee, right? It's just going to be a ton of ice cream and cheap coffee flavoring. Yes, but any coffee flavoring is at least an acceptable substitute for real coffee, even if it's not really coffee. Yeah, but at least you gotta, gotta try it for your sake. Why would you choke down a crappy shake for my sake? You do everything for me. Everything. Of course I do. That's my job. A stiff chuckle slips out from under her breath. Right. But I want to do things for you too. Like, I want to do things for you too. So I'll drink a shake in your honor. <laughs> I mean, to each their own. So you're ordering the coffee shake as a cosmic favor? You're losing me, Mayor. She whines, momentary frustration seeping onto her face. No, not like that. It's silly, but I want to poke around in your mind a little. That way I can do favors and help. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. So I guess it's not just for your sake, but for both our sakes. She smiles and rests her head to the side, as if expecting my shoulder to be there like always. Realizing she's, she's only leaning on air, Marina blinks and tries to play it off with a tiny cough. I saw that. <laughs> Before I can take my teasing to more exciting places, the waitress returns from the kitchen, barely managing to balance our drinks on the platter as my coffee splashes everywhere. She doesn't seem to care. She places our drinks on the table, then limps out her notepad and pain to take our orders. Thanks, but I'll stick with coffee. Marina's too distracted by the shake to notice. Her eyes climb up the tower of extra whipped cream as it twirls to the ceiling, rivaling the thermometer outside. Snap to, what do you want? Oh! She opens up the big menu and flips through the pages, multiple times, front to back, side to side, even upside, repeating the process every time. Before we miss the festival, Mayor? I know, I know, but there's so much to choose from. I have to be picky. You don't, you didn't have a problem vacuuming up everything at the buffet. Marina drops the menu. If it were a few pounds heavier, I'm pretty sure she would have dropped it on my feet. Hand the menu to the waitress, she leans over the table, inches away from my face. She places her order, burning holes in pupils. I'll have the pancake sandwich. Dead serious. The waitress wobbles away, somehow not collapsing in the way back to the kitchen. I try not to burst out laughing at Marina, but it doesn't work. The cracks are showing. Stilted snorts and spurts of snickering keep leaking out. Marina's cheeks puff out, getting brighter as I bubble over. Why do you have to tease me about everything, Amber? I break. My laugh echoes across the diner. 
Again, remember the glares, but I don't even care. Fine, maybe I won't even share the treasure with you after all. I wave off her empty threat and settle down. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just that, done laughing, I rest my chin on the table and start fumbling with the salt and pepper shakers. That's what Grams used to order, all the time. Marina has already reverted back to her usual self, watching me pass the salt and pepper back and forth like she wants to join in too. It's so weird, just two huge pancakes with eggs, bacon, and ham smashed in the middle. Things drenched in syrup. Okay, that sounds pretty awesome, and now I'm even hungrier than I was before. That sounds super tasty, though. I chuckle and slide of the pepper. Oh, it was a fucking game of salt and pepper back and forth. I'm sure you'll love it. Now it's just a salt shaker sliding between my hands. Oh, never mind, they're just... Okay, each got one. He never eats the eggs, always just passes them on to me. They're so gross, just scrambled and cold and sticky. I always tell him no, but the dork just laughs and says he's gonna keep e egging me on. Oh. Mmm. Every single time. Marina laughs at a stupid joke. I laugh too. We would just end up bringing it home in a box, and when it went bad, he would just take it out of the fridge and say, That's all, yokes, like it was the most clever freaking thing. She laughs even harder, that one. I think I do too. I keep my eyes focused on the shaker, sliding it faster and faster. When we go home, you two really need to get together and meet. The salt shaker tri uh, trips on my pinky and topples over, spilling a few grains of salt. Marina is tense, but forces a smile anyway. She sighs. We both look down and go silent. I, uh, I think I'm going to head back to the RV. I get up and reach into my pocket, placing a bill on the table. Amber, don't worry, it'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Just need some time. Leaving Marina behind me, I walk out of the diner. And with that, I think on the episode here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.